Hello, and um, welcome to this first in a series of mastering sessions where I'm going to master uh, in real time for to share with you to see how I use um, the master rig in WaveLab 10. Um, trying to get just give some specific uh, work for people that have this program and may have these the set of tools, but are looking for more information on how to use them. Thought I would just share uh, my workflow and hopefully that might illuminate or inspire you to uh, mess with this stuff yourself. That's all I can hope for. So well, here we have um, a song that I composed called Plain and Simple. <laughs> That's what it's called, Plain and Simple. And here it is as it came in from Cubase, just a, at a low volume. I always do my mixes at a fairly low volume. Once I bring it into WaveLab, the first thing I want to do is be done with that low volume. I want to start raising it up a bit. So I'm going to go up to the level here. And um, I prefer to bring everything up to uh, negative 3. So I have a preset for negative 3. And I'm going to do that. And there we go. So now I have my file kind of uh, at what I consider a workable, you know, volume level. I like it here because when I'm starting to use plugins and different things I want to be able to have enough signal that it's going to you know hit those plugins a little bit um, without working so hard. And at the same time I don't want this thing peaked out so I got no headroom. So now when you listen to it there you go. Now you can actually hear it a little bit. <clears throat> Alright so First thing I do is I open up um, the master rig, <clears throat> which is the um, plugin that's in included with WaveLab 10, which um, you know is a series of uh, mastering plugins. And I use a, a blank slate pretty much, which I'm going to open up right here. This master, here it is, this master rig. It has a whole bunch of uh, modules in it: limiter, compressor, equalizer. Dynamic EQ, Saturator, Imager. We're going to use most of these, not all of them, for what I'm going to do on this song. But um, each song kind of, you know, has its own uh, course of action. But we're going to use a few of these. So the next thing, once that plugin is open, uh, once this plugin is open, is I want to bring in this option, which is called the Smart Bypass. It's a little button up here, and uh, push this, and it opens this window. This is a great tool. What this allowed, you know, uh, uh, again, experienced uh, mastering engineers and mixers will already know this stuff, um, but let's talk about it. And, you know, again, you, you've you probably heard, if you've watched any videos on this subject, you know, you want to try to keep your volume levels at the same, you know, as your uh, material so that you're not just being influenced by louder, louder being better, right? So that's what this tool allows us to do. So to use this, once it's opened up, um, you know, open it up and start the file. I'm going to set up a loop point. This is kind of what I'm going to use to work with. Um, right away you want to hit this thing that says update gains. And it starts to kind of take a reading. You know, of the file so that as you start adding your processing you're not going to hear the volume change you're just going to hear the effect of what you're doing and I use this button a lot as I'm changing things I'm constantly coming over here updating this and you'll see that as we go so now there's two options here these first two options one says your original audio and one says the processed audio but with level correction and right now they're pretty much identical and that's exactly how they should be because we haven't done anything yet so that's our working slate. <clears throat> All right, so let's begin this <clears throat> process. First thing I want to do is um, I'm going to bring in an EQ here. I have a couple of EQs. I'm just going to pick this EQA and um, start my music. <clears throat> and the first thing I go for is I grab the band five, and I'm, I'm go what I'm going to look for is some mud, basically. That's the first thing I'm looking for. And I'm going to stay kind of in this 500 to 1K area. So listen as I mess with this. I'm going to exaggerate it. Okay, so we're going to go.
grab this number five band and looking for the mud. Right there, I'm gonna pull that down. And I like to exaggerate things. I'll take this right down to nothing. And then I will start to bring it back up. And I will hear to where it starts to bring the mud back in. And then overdo it. So I'm constantly like going over the mark. That's kind of how I do things. I will exaggerate it to hear it. And then I will exaggerate it to not hear it. And I will look for Oh man, that sounds good right there. That's it. That's what I'm looking for. Now I'm gonna go back over to update the gains. Listen to the difference. Definitely. Oh, immediately clarity. There's a thickness there, and there's a open. There's an openness in the sound. So there you go. Step one. Step two. I like to grab this band six. Do something similar in this uh, two to five k range, but here I'm looking for more of the uh, the mid uh, stab. You know, things that are like just harsh. Exaggerate it right there. Take it way down. Take it up. Not so much on that one. <clears throat> Do my update gains. Listen to the difference. I'm liking it. Um, I'll go down to my band two here, and I, this first bump right here, which is the bass. I'm gonna accentuate my bass. I'm gonna kind of shrink the cue a little bit to kind of engulf that bass, and then I'm gonna bring it down. Just give myself a little bump on the bass. Um, you know, everybody's got preference how much they want. I just want a little bump on that. As we go along, things tend to get louder, so I don't want to do that. I do the same thing with band three, but I'm looking more like for the kick area, real similar area. Right in there. Shorten that cue down, bring it down. Just a little bump. I go to my band one and I kind of turn that into a uh, low shelf and I'm just going to roll off a little bit of the low end. If you do any study on this you know that's good just for the speakers. It's stuff you can't really hear but it's low end information. Alright let's update the gains. Let's listen to the difference. It's definitely opening up. Let me turn up the music a little bit in just in case you can't hear what's going on. Yeah, sounding good to me. All right, <laughs> moving on. I might grab the band seven, try to bring some of my high stuff in. Just a little bit of that. Shorten that cue down a little bit, just a little bit. And then finally, uh, band eight, I'm gonna put a high shelf on this and just put a little bit of air in it. And there it is. Update it. Listen to it on process. Oh man, so it's, you know, Already, just a great difference. You know, you don't want to you don't want to change your song, but if you can enhance it and get some clarity out of it in this mastering phase, this is this is what's great about it. Okay, that's it. Uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to do with the EQ. Uh, I would go on to add another module. At this point, I'm going to uh, deal with um, compression. I'll stick a compressor on here. And um, the first thing I do with the compressor, 
uh, I put on all these um, auto releases. This is just something that's been trial and error and you know studying the thing and I just prefer to do this uh, for this style and what I'm trying to do. Um, the uh, ratios I'm going to kind of leave them where they're at. If I turn them up a little bit, I can turn them up a little bit, but I, I'm going to really get more compression uh, of a compressed sound on my kick and bass. Right now, I don't want to do that for these for this song. I want to keep it uh, not so squished. So those are going to stay right around where they're at. Um, the attacks, I may bring the attack down a fraction on the bass, <clears throat> and the others I may open them up just a little bit. And again. Uh, I just know this because trial and error. I mean, I, I, there's a step I go through to listen for, um, and I'll share that at some other point. It takes more time, but I just know kind of where I'm going with these. Um, okay, then here's the here's the kind of the critical part. So playing the song again uh, on the threshold, I'm going to bring them all down until I see just a little bit of a tickle on the signal. So I'm on band two here. I'm going to bring this down. You see, I'm crushing it. This yellow thing shows how much compression. That's what I want to give, just a, just so I'm getting a little bit of a tickle out of it. I don't want to. I don't even hardly want to see that yellow bar. I want to make sure it's reacting to the signal. It's catching the peaks, but I don't want it working too hard. I don't want it smashing my song <clears throat> right there. Now, if you can see it on your screen, but there's just a tiny little bit of yellow there. That's all I want. I go to the next one. The same thing. I crush it down. And I start bringing it back to where I got just a little bit of a tickle on there. Same thing on the highs. Bring it down. Bring it back up. And I see just a little bit of a tickle there. I know the compressor's working, but I don't want it killing my song. And then the bass, same thing. Bring it down. And bring it back up a little bit. Okay. Now the fun part. <laughs> And this is something I don't see anybody else doing. So, uh, welcome to my world, guys, because this is something to share this with you. So, uh, I go to these bands. Oh, and I, I need to adjust this. I haven't done this yet. I take my low band down, so it's pretty much just dealing with uh, that first bump there. I don't, this thing can, can go a, a lot of ways, but I'd want to just, just kind of deal with that first bump of the bass. I bring these mid bands down, eh, kind of middle between the 5 and the 1K. That's kind of where I found most of my uh, the sweet spot to be. Okay, now, what I like to do is take each one of these. A lot of times I got my eyes closed when I'm doing it, so I'm not even looking at the screen, but I'm listening. Watch, as I turn this up, nothing but thick, right? Thick and mud. And if I take it all the way down, nothing but thin and empty. So I'm going to look for the sweet spot there in between those two. And I may not even, you can watch the screen, but I may not even be looking at the screen. I'm just listening for thick and thin. And where's the good spot between those two? Where it's not too thick, where it's not too thin. All right, here I go. Right there. For now, I'm gonna stop with that. I'm gonna do the next band, same thing. I'm gonna overdo it, too much high. No high, too much high, no high. Right there, clear as a bell. The highs. I don't want to do too much of those. The bass. Thud. No thud. And there it is. There it is. I'm going to play with this one again because I, I usually don't have it that high, but that's what sounded good. But I'm going to mess with it again to fine tune it. Too thin. Mud just comes in. Back it off. Yeah, that's it right there. Okay, I'm going to hit my bypass. Do my gains. Listen to the original. Oh, what a difference, right? I could listen to that right there. Just crank it up. Just crank it up and I want to listen to that right there. That sounds good to me. It's funny how far you can go with in a very short time. Alright. Moving on. 
I'm going to add in a little bit of saturation here. What am I saturation? Uh, um, I don't mess with the bands too much here. I'm going to leave those just as they are. Um, the drive. Well, here, watch. As you crank these up, you're going to hear it like here on this band. You're going to see the, hear the highs come in. And I don't know if you can hear it, again, depending on what you're listening for, or listening through what speakers or headphones, but it becomes uh, squishy, you know, almost like a compression, but it's like, you know, it's almost like getting a noise effect in there. So in a way, it, it's a thickening, it's really what it is. A high, it has highs and thickening. I just bring in a bit of that, uh, you know, on each of these. Again, each track I might do a little bit different, but on this kind of song, I'm just gonna bring up just a little bit of each of those. The mixes, maybe a little bit, a little bit extra on the highs and a little bit less on these low ones. Again, I've done this so many times, a lot of the stuff is just automatic, but and I'll, sometimes I'll, one of these days I'll make a, a video showing you how I arrived at a lot of these settings, but I'm just sharing this for you as a starting point and one one approach so you can mess with it you're the same way um sometimes i'll do this sometimes i won't i'll readjust these bands i'm going to go ahead and do it on this again i'm going to grab these bands and do that same thing i just did too much too little just right too much tricky one there, harshness. This stuff is so much just your personal taste, you know, how you want your music to sound. Of course, you can always bring in a reference track. Um, I'm, use, I'm using the reference track in my head right now for this because I just wanted to show you the way I see it or hear it. Okay, update my gains. Listen to it. Sounds really nice. All right, and then uh, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, the imager. Imager again. I don't go too crazy with uh, mostly the, mostly with the imager. Um, the imager, you know, it's going to spread the signal out. Watch. I'm going to let me go to these highs up here. I'm going to solo them. If I go all the way. It pretty much sends them both like a stereo spread to each side of the speaker. If I bring them all the way down, it's pretty much mono. I kind of give that one a little bit of an image. I give the highs a little bit more of an image. I don't do too much with this. The bass I give just a little bit of an image. And that's it. I don't mess with the outputs on this. I'm going to update my gains. I'm going to listen to the audio. Back to the process. Sound real good. Finally, I'm going to add in a um, limiter. And uh, the limiter, I don't do a whole lot with the limiter, but I do. And here's the thing let me stop this for a minute. This is what I don't do I don't use my limiter uh, to bring up my final volume. This is what everybody seems to be telling you to do. You watch all these videos and they're like, yeah, use the limiter to bring it up, you know, to your final. No, I don't do that. That, that, that has given me nothing but terrible sounding recordings. Um, it smashes the heck out of it, and I hate the sound of what I get out of it. Uh, there's a better way, especially in WaveLab. There's the meta normalizer, which allows you to basically pick whatever volume or loudness you want your song to be at. And I use that, and that's come out with some, give me some real good results. But uh, the limiter, I will use uh, to thicken it a little bit with the optimize. Not much, not enough to where I'm squishing my song, but I'll thicken it a little bit. And I'll use the transient. So listen to what happens here. Um, I'll turn the transients on. Uh, the, the transients are kind of like if you've ever used an envelope shaper, it kind of gives you this paintball effect, pop, 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 on the on the attack of different things. Watch if I turn the highs up. Listen to what it does. You hear that kind of like smacking sound. 
So, you know, that's desirable to a point. It's not so good if you overdo it. So a little bit of that on each of the bands is really good. It gives a little bit of uh, distinction to the sound. And then I'll give it just a little bit of the optimized to taste. See, that's already squishing it. I don't like that. I'll just keep it right there. Check my uh, gains. Listen to my levels. And that's it. There it is. All right, so at that point, I'll shut this down. When I turn off the uh, Smart Bypass, it usually comes up louder. Yep. So let me play a little bit of this and you'll hear what we've done to it. Um, I'll put a link to the song. You can check it out. It's on Spotify. But uh, that's it for now. Thanks for uh, joining, and uh, we'll do it again with another song at another time.